the more that I read the Bible, yes, God cares ultimately about obedience. Yes, that is the first thing to do is to obey God. But second, or what I have been noticing about the Bible and what I have gathered from teachings and when I read or listen to the audio Bible, God loves sacrifice. When you sacrifice, God loves it. I am not speaking sacrificing animals and stuff like that. Those days are done away with. Sacrificing means doing for others, doing things for God, even when you are in pain, even when you don't have enough funds, even when you don't have enough of what you need but you are doing what you are pushing and doing things even when you don't have the energy the money you don't have enough of that resource but you are giving doing you are sacrificing for God God loves sacrifice so if you really want to please God, of course, obey God. That is first. That is always first. Obey God. But if you really want to make him happy, yes, first obey and sacrifice afterward. God loves sacrifice. Don't sacrifice and not obey. How can I say that? Some people put more emphasis on sacrificing and not obeying. That is wrong. Because God wants your obedience first. Sacrifice is nothing if you are not willing to obey him. So it is always obedience first, then sacrifice. So once you get the obedience down, sacrifice. God loves it when you sacrifice. Sacrifice in prayer. Hey, Kevin, I work 8 to 10 hours a day. I really don't have time to pray. Well, what if you do pray and pray for hours? God sees the sacrifice that you are making. Well, Kevin, I don't really have time to read the Bible because I work and I have kids and and husband and stuff like that if you do it God is going to notice the sacrifice sacrifice and you are going to get blessed because of it my phone fell okay God loves it when you sacrifice so always keep that in mind obedience first then sacrifice give me a second please Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Okay, pop my neck. <sighs> Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. So what is that saying there? Let no man seek his own or woman, but every man another's wealth. This is saying, don't only look out for yourself. Look out for other people. What does wealth mean? Let's look it up. I like this definition here. Plentiful supplies of a particular resource. Hey, I see that you don't have enough food here, so let me help you out. I see that you have a bad leg or 
a bad back. Let me cut your grass for you. Let me move around things in your home to help you out. Let me do things for you so you don't have to be in pain trying to do it. Let me be there for you and you don't have to pay me anything, but I am here willing to help you so you will have a much easier time in life. But Kevin, what about my life? <laughs> So you are saying I should spend my whole life helping everyone and nobody is helping me. So how is that fair? <laughs> oh, my Lord, was it fair <laughs> for Jesus Christ to come to earth and die for something that, that he did not do? He died for our sins. He did not do anything wrong. But yet, he wanted to help us, so he ministered to us the word of God. So because of his death, it is now possible for us to get into heaven. Was that fair for him having to die for our sins? Was it fair for him to be persecuted? Jesus Christ is part of the Godhead. God made everything a supreme being. He lowered himself to help us. A being that made everything came down to earth well, he was born as a child, but pretty much, you know what I mean, came down to earth and was persecuted for our sake. And you are talking about fairness. Listen. You may see yourself doing many things for people now. but you are going to reap what you sow. For instance, I was doing something for this one person for over a year and I did not, I'm telling you, I did not want to do that for that person at all. But I knew what the Bible was saying about helping others. And I had to fight with my thoughts for quite a while, then it got to the point where I got used to helping that person. So those bad thoughts did not come to my mind that often. But at first, I thought that it was so unfair and I thought and felt that I was being used because I said to myself, I lived my life even when I was in sin. A person may say that, you know, I was careful in doing certain things. You know, I didn't do, I did wrong things, but I made sure that my problems did not reach other people where other people would have to prop me up. And, you know, I was kind of mad about it, but I kept on thinking about what the Bible says. Now, I believe I was doing this for that person for about close to a year and a half or close to two years. Now, some things happened where people are doing for me now. Which I did not see. I never have known. I never would have thought that I would be getting helped to the extent that I am being helped now. It is amazing. So what I was doing for people all the way back then, now I am being helped in my time of need now. How amazing is that? 
I never thought that I would be put in this position that I am in now. I never thought it. But I was going by the principles of God, doing what he was saying to do, even when I did not want to do it. You don't know what is going to happen to you. You don't know if your leg is going to break. You don't know if you are going to get cancer or something that is going to disable you. You don't know. God can do anything. God can do anything. You may be semi-healthy right now. But God can snap his fingers or whatever and you can become crippled. So all that money that you have saved up, that good job, your clothes, those nice clothes that you have, those nice cars that you have, it can all be taken away so quickly. God can make it to the point where he can disable your cars, disable your home to where insects and bugs and stuff can come into your home. So how can you boast then or say that, hey, I work so hard for what I have, other people have to do the same. What if God curse everything that you have now? How can you say then that you worked hard for everything that you have? It is not about what we do for ourselves. It is about what we do for other people. You want to get closer to God. You want to get blessed by God, but you are not doing the basics. You want to be a teacher. You want to be a prophet. You want to have all of these high offices, but you are not willing to do the basic things. I am not looking for a high office. I am content pretty much how things are now. <laughs> I really am, you know, every so often going to a person and telling them about God and going my own way. I am content with doing the basics for people. I don't need to be in front of people and preaching to them and all this other stuff. No, I don't need that. I don't really care for it either. I pray that this makes sense because what type of leader would you be if you can't follow the basics? What if you do become a leader or what if you are a leader now and you are not doing the basics and you are not teaching your church how to do the basics? My Lord, you are going to corrupt many, many, many people. My Lord. The closer that you get to God, the more that you are going to see that he wants you to do for others. You are going to find out that our life per se is not ours. Our life We belong, yes, we belong to God, yes, I know that, but we are supposed to be servants unto people. By serving people, we show that we are serving God. When we are caring about people more than ourselves, we are showing that we love God and we serve God because only Christians are going to become servants for people without looking for anything back, payment and stuff like that. I know there has been a few times and I am not trying to brag or want you to pat me on the back and stuff like that. There were some poor people that I helped and I did not mention at first I did not mention anything about God to them, 
but by me treating them a certain way, they knew that I am a Christian. By the way that I treated them, I did not have to say that I served God. I didn't. And the other one that I helped out, this person talked to me for a while, telling me how they should change and how God saved them from him from many accidents and stuff like that. And he got hit by a car and this and this and that telling me that he should change and all of this stuff here. We have to show the love of God to people. This is what we need to do. When we show the love of God to people, it is going to take love in some cases or many cases actually, it is going to take the love of God to get people to come to God. You can preach to a person all day long. I can make YouTube videos all day long. But if I don't show some of those people love and compassion, in many cases, people are not going to accept God. They need an example to follow. This is why the Bible was saying that we are the light of the world, that we are the salt of the earth, I believe. I believe that is what it is saying. We have to show the example of how to live for God. And if we are not living right, how can we be the light? How can we be the salt? We are good for nothing if we choose to act like everyone else. There has to be a difference. There have to be a difference. I pray that this makes sense. I know that you may not have been taught this in church. I believe you only have been taught about offerings and tithes and God is going to bless you. And this year is your season and stuff like that. Look. Do the basics. This is the basics here. Do you believe that God is going to allow a selfish person in heaven? God, I struggled all my life. I was poor, so I told myself that once I grow up, I am never going to be poor again, so I worked really, really hard. And I made it to the point where I bought a house and three cars and stuff like that. And I did not want to give to people because I figured if I can do it, they can do it too. So this is why I was only to myself and thought about myself. Do you believe that God is going to allow a selfish person into heaven? Are you serious? Do we serve a selfish God? Is any quality, do God have the quality of selfishness within him? No. So how can you say that you know God or you have the Holy Spirit within you if you are selfish? My Lord. Please think about what I am saying to you. If everyone would help everyone, I don't care how rich you are, I don't care how poor you are, because money is not everything. Sometimes people need your time. If everyone would help everyone, I'm telling you, this place would be a better place by far, by far. I believe some supernatural things would happen on this earth if everyone would look out for everyone. Great miracles would happen on this earth by far. But everyone, or many people at least, they care for their own good. 
And that's why so many evil things are happening happening on this earth because people are selfish. My Lord, I pray that this all makes sense. Stop caring about yourself and your family. Everyone is your family, even I. I am your family. Whether you are white, black, Mexican, Chinese, whatever, Asian, we all are family, and we have to accept each other as family. And we have to pray for each other as well. So I pray that this makes sense. Let me stop here. God bless.